How do I look? Do I look all right? I mean... You've got a bug in your hair. I will, yeah, get that out then. No one's going to be able to see that. Yeah, well, you can see it. You'll just stare at me. Just like Have you got it out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You look as good as you can be with, like, crisps on your chest and, like, with your double, double jacket and things. Is double jacket not working? No, it looks good. I like it. I like the matching sho- socks. Okay, so sh- shall we start? Are you ready? I'm born ready. I'm so comfortable. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Nico. And I'm Jack. And welcome to another podcast. Today we are at... You Do Mountain. If yes. that's how you say it. I'm not I quite sure how you say it, but... Well, that's how I would say it, but then I'm not Chinese, so... Um, yeah, we're at You Do Mountain, which is like a few hours away from Beijing. And look at this beautiful forest. It seems that we just missed autumn. Which is a little disappointing. Yeah, we kind of came because we thought the leaves were going to be really, really beautiful. So Turns we're a little out, disappointed. We are a little disappointed, which leads us on nicely to what our topic is today. But just quick side note, it is really beautiful, so I'm not that disappointed. No, it is absolutely stunning here. I thoroughly recommend it. But maybe when you can actually see the autumn colours. Okay, so that leads us on really nicely with what we're going to talk about today, which is China's most disappointing places. Ooh, controversial. I haven't picked them. Can I just point out? Basically, what it is, is my friend Andy has this great Instagram. If you don't follow Andy on Instagram, go and check him out. He posts amazing photos about China. Not controversial. No. (laughs) And... In one of his stories, he posted a survey and it was the top 20 most disappointed places in China, which was done this year in 2020, in September, sorry. And it was from Chinese tourists. So I thought, that's interesting. That would make a good podcast. So this is Chinese tourists saying it's not foreign tourists. This this is is domestic tourists. tourists. Domestic tourists. The 20 places that they think are the most disappointing in China. Exactly. Exactly. So wow, that's quite the list. We're going to talk about them today. And obviously, we haven't been to all of them because, I mean... Well, we'll fire through those ones pretty quickly. Yeah. If there's one that we've not been to, um, we might give it like a similar kind of idea of somewhere similar we've been to. Yeah. But feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what it's like. And for any of them, I want to yeah. see... W- do, do you, you guys feel agree? The same? Like, are these places really disappointing? Yeah, because obviously I, I know the list. So, like, I do agree with some. I don't know the list, though, so I'm I pretty excited to see it. definitely don't agree with others. Uh, but Ooh. I'd love to know your thoughts. And then um, maybe at the end, or maybe next podcast, we can tell you ours. Anyway, Ooh, we'll touch on that. Good idea. Yeah, if you like this podcast and you want to know ours, then leave a comment. Um, We are going to start with number 20 because then you'll have to watch the whole podcast to see what's number one. Ooh, I like it. Suspense. All right, fire it off. Let's go. Or you could just Google the survey. But anyway, okay, so number 20 is Hubu Alley in Wuhan. So we haven't been there. We haven't been to Wuhan yet, but I'm sure we will go at some point. Um, But I did Google this and it seems like it's like a generic kind of food street. Yeah, where you where you kind of get these in a lot of cities. Um, so I mean, there's not much to say on that. I can't. During, really during the coronavirus uh, epidemic, I edited a film about Wuhan, and we featured that street. Oh, I didn't yeah. film it myself. Um, yeah. What did it look like? Very average. But people were pretty happy once it reopened. I think so. Yeah, it seems like uh, a popular place. In it's Wuhan. obviously a popular place to go, but Is more than that, I don't know. Most food streets I find are a little disappointing, though. No, that's true. The ones in Chongqing were pretty good, but Chongqing food, as we've mentioned, is pretty <laughs> damn tasty. <laughs> Number 19, we have been to because we live in Beijing, and it's at Nanlugua Alley in Beijing. Ooh. Okay, so when you first come to China, I think these places are actually really quite nice. Like, if you're a tourist yep. here, they are interesting. Once you kind of travel around China and you go to more and more cities, you kind yep. of realize that most of them are very similar. They just kind of sell mainly the same things. And I think it's okay, but personally, it's a bit touristy for me. And I think once you step off it and you go into the actual hutongs, they're so much better. Yes. Yeah, so for those of you not familiar, Nanlogo Chang is a, uh, like a, a hutong, 
but it's like the main hutong in the gulo like area the of Beijing, the main thoroughfare. And yeah, you're absolutely right. The places off to the side are so much better. Yeah. So actually, it's a good place to go to get your bearings. Mm. Go there. You'll know you'll be slap bang in the middle of the hutongs and then get the hell off it as soon as possible. And yeah, then it's all around busy. there is amazing. Yeah, so. exactly. Like, I like that hutong. There's lots of nice places. I like the one opposite. But that, that road itself, Ali, is just a little bit loud. Okay, so number 18 is Mount Hua in Shanxi, so Mount Huashan. I've heard good things, so I'm surprised. Like, I'm surprised this at seems, this one. Yeah, yeah. So we've, yeah, we've not been because it looks <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, so you've got that like... It's the one with oh. the most dangerous hike or one of the most dangerous hikes in the oh world God, where scary. you like walk on a plank. Now, I'm scared enough on a glass bridge, which China seemed to love, but it's like a plank that you hook yourself on with. It looks terrifying. I mean, how could you be disappointed? Because you like I don't think that's really our thing. Die? So I think we're probably not going to go there. So leave us a comment. Let us know if you've been there. Why is it so disappointing? Because I mean, that sounds. If that's your thing, that sounds like it would be pretty. I mean, pretty terrifying. Like know? I'm so clumsy. I would definitely die. I'm shocked at that one. So number seventeen is. Kwan Dai Ali in Chengdu. Sorry if I said that, pronounced that wrong. I'm sorry if I pronounced a few of these wrong. Yeah. We can't all be perfect. Okay, so I looked this up again. Seems to be a bit of a theme here, guys. Looks like another food shopping street. So it's not just us that don't like these places. A lot of the time they're very commercial. Yeah. And it seems almost a cynical way just to make lots of money. And obviously, like... Tourism is a great way to stimulate the economy. And, uh, and so, you know, I always want to support a local economy. But I often find that those sorts of places, it's not really like, they don't feel like the most local places. That no. Is the money really going into the hands of the local people who actually need it? I don't know. Next one. Let's go. Number 16 is Feng Huang Ancient Town in Hunan. So this is otherwise known as the Phoenix Ancient City. Okay. Now, I think it looks really nice here. This is like the the, the houses which are old, stilty buildings. But you don't want to go there, do you? I'll be honest. So, like, I actually uh, shot a film and we drove past the entrance to Feng Huang. There was literally the car park where the coaches go to park up. Ooh. And we drove there on the way back when we were driving back to Changsha or driving back to another place to get back to Changsha. And the, the village that we'd just been to in the countryside was so amazing that I felt like, okay, this is just... I saw the car parks, thought, this looks super commercial. I'm just going to swear mm. it. It wasn't for me. I'm quite cynical. I'm not a you big fan of... You are very cynical. Sorry, guys. Um, I think it looks pretty. I think if we were in the area, I'd want to go. Yeah. But then maybe I would be disappointed. I don't yeah. know. Number 15 is Sichiko in Chongqing. So, obviously, we've just been to Chongqing, and we did plan to go to Sijiko, but our schedule ended up meaning we would be going to Sijiko on the first day of the national holiday, and we decided, Ooh. no. No. We thought it was best not to go because we thought it would be really, really busy, so we decided to take photos instead. Yeah, so we got I a, think that was a wise we, move. We made a whole film, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so we, we can't comment on that one, unfortunately. Um, so number 14 is another another ancient town in Hunan. Hunan? What's going on? So Furong, ancient town in Hunan. So this one is another popular tourist destination, and it has like a really big waterfall in the middle of it. Okay. Which lights up. Now, um, I think, again, this looks really pretty. Um, I think you would, again, hate it. Um, uh, but maybe I'm just seduced by Instagram pics. My friend Rachel meets China. She's been to both of these places. And she makes them look amazing. Yeah, so to be fair, I've seen some really nice pictures on Instagram yeah. um, of some of these places. So maybe they are really nice. Or maybe, you know... It's for domestic tourists, Chinese tourists who are going there, seen the real thing and thought, nah, it's not for me. In a way, I almost want to go to some of these places to see whether it's true or not, you know? I almost feel like you, you, if you know what you're going to get and you think it's going to be disappointing, yep. it's almost better. Like, I, for one, felt like everybody kept telling me what Lijiang was like. And yep. I was, I expected it to be 
not as good as actually what it was because I thought it was going to be a bit more disappointing. But actually, because I was thought it was going to be really disappointing when we got there, I actually didn't mind it's it. It's all about expectations, isn't yeah. it? Lower yeah, lower your expectations and then expectations everything will be on. better. <laughs> That's how we look at life, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so number 13 is waterfalls generic. Like, I don't know what I mean. How can generic you ge- waterfalls. generalize we are actually, waterfalls? We are sat by a generic waterfall not, right now. You can't even see. It's not a waterfall. It's a river. <laughs> Okay, I mean, we did, but we saw a generic waterfall earlier. We um, did, but that, like, that is possibly the first waterfall I've seen in China. Have we? Yeah. Have we seen any waterfalls in China? We've seen a few, but and they were okay. I don't feel like we specifically went to a specific waterfall. Maybe Clearly that not would popular be. with China Chinese tourists, though. So maybe, um, maybe. I don't know why. Yeah. So number twelve is another generic one. It's old lanes. I mean, what's disappointing about old lanes? <laughs> Well, I guess if you if you characterize old lanes as or Nanlo Gushan in, uh, in or yeah Nanlo maybe Gushan, it means whatever, one of in, those in Beijing maybe yeah maybe it's talking about like ancient culture streets in which case yeah I do yeah. kind of agree but also China's got some very pretty old lanes and yeah stuff some I the old like some of the old so. towns but then again the old lanes that we like are old lanes that don't have shops and people and they're yeah. just like random old lanes which we think are really beautiful but probably no one else does hit me up with your favorite old lanes i'd love to see them (laughs) yeah i love an old lane okay so number 11 is generic again food streets which we just we spoke about this briefly earlier like i can kind of agree with that because like the food that you usually get on these food streets just isn't that great no it's not that great but again if it's your first night in town and you just want to try some stuff place, yeah. or you're just passing through, it's a good starting place. And, yeah. you know, it, it can be hard to find what you're looking for, you know. For me personally, like, you know how much I love food. Yeah. So although they are a little bit disappointed because the food's not, like, the best quality, yep. it's also in one place. So, like, you can try so That's much true. food. So I quite like a food street. But, I mean, I would prefer it if it was, like, a street food market because I feel like there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a difference for we, sure. Yeah, and like if if I went to a street food market, I'm I'm happier because it's more tastier usually. Yeah. I think. Where are you, where are some good street food markets in yeah, in China? I would love to go and make some videos about some street food markets. We've been to some in other Asian countries. So yeah, yeah if you guys know anywhere where there's like kind of some good sort of places where you can try loads of different street food and things. Um, Because we went to one in Shenzhen, which was great. Yeah, yeah. Um, We used to have a brilliant one in Nanjing, right beside where we worked. Beijing, you don't find them here. Um, So yeah, if you know any in any cities, let us know. And I actually will travel to that city just to go to that. We will travel for food. We'll we travel for food. Always will travel for food. <laughs> okay, so can we just reshuffle before we do number 10? Yeah, let me check that. Okay, so that was 20 to 11. How are you feeling so far about the most disappointing places? I agree with some of them. Some I'm unsure about and some I don't know. Some are so. a bit too broad, I feel. Yeah, There's definitely. There's quite a lot of generic in this list and I feel like they could be narrowed down a little bit more. So next time you do a disappointing survey, China, narrow it down a bit more, I would say. Okay, so let's start with the top 10. So number 10 is close to our heart. I'm going all radio style now. So number in a number 10 is Fuzi Miao Nanjing. Fuji Miao, Nanjing. That brings our back old, some memories. Our old haunting grounds. For those of you who don't know, we used to live in Nanjing. Yeah. Uh, Fuji Miao is like kind of the an old part. It's a few temples. It's down by the river. Uh, it's a few temples, some shops. I quite liked it when we were lived there, and my parents enjoyed it when we took them. And it's pleasant. It's nice. So number nine is the Muslim Quarter in Xi'an. Ooh. So again, we have been here. Yeah. What did you think about it? Well... I thought it was quite fun. We again we took my parents, my parents came with us. We tried we tried so much food. That was really fun. Yeah. But then the second night when we went just off the Muslim street, like the main thoroughfare again, and we did that little kind of route from the food ranger where he yeah. recommended some places. And it was literally a block away. That was just so much better. I think that the food that was amazing. For me, that's just the key example of like yeah. a lot of the time these places are a good place to go 
to find out like, okay, roughly I'm in the right area. Yeah. But don't ever stay on the main street. Always go to the back street because that's yeah. where the best things are happening. Guaranteed. Yeah. And that was really nice. I, I mean, yeah, go yeah, on with yeah, those yeah. dumplings. Oh, oh, oh. oh. should we go back to Xi'an? The yeah, I great. feel like we're about Jewish Xi'an visit. I think for so sure. too. Okay, so number eight is museums. General in general museums. Oh, I feel quite strongly about this because I feel like, I mean, for us as a foreigner, they they are definitely disappointing because generally even kind of big museums that in beijing and things that we go to often the translation is either very poor or there's no translation at all and considering at least before this year how many foreign tourists come to china that's something i would like to see because i'm really interested in chinese history and i would love to go to some of these museums but a lot of the time you don't know really what you're looking at because mm. there's not enough that's a very interesting things there point. So. for me i wasn't even thinking about that i actually thought um because we've been to a few. I mean, that the museum in Nanjing was huge. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I was blown away by it. Oh, I, yeah. I, I wasn't disappointed Lots at all. Lots of artifacts. All, but you are correct. Yeah, sometimes the translation can be a little bit off. And that's kind of the same in a lot of places. And I, I think it's a shame, really, because... I, for There's one, would a like lot to of good <laughs> English speakers in China. So yeah, like yeah, yeah. If you're a good English speaker, get in contact with your local museum. Uh, sort yeah. their translation game out. Um, Foreign friends will thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's next then? Oh. I am strongly in a disagreement with this one. Oh, I wonder what this is going to be then. Number seven. Parks. Parks? Generic. Bum, bum, bum. Mic drop. Are you joking? No, I'm not joking. Like, what? I'm at... Okay. Is that why no one's watched our Parks video? Maybe. <laughs> I I think Parks are like the least disappointing place ever. Yeah. So, but maybe, maybe Chinese people think they're disappointing because, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Why do you find Parks disappointing? What is disappointing about the Parks I in China? The parks in China. They're China has the place. best parks of any country in the world, hands down. They're the, they are the most fun. So I, I disagree. I think the parks themselves are beautiful. They're manicured really well. And for me, it's not about the park itself. It's about the people inside the park. The culture. The culture. What's going on? The park life. It just literally warms my heart and fills me with joy. How can you think it's disappointing? I don't know. Check out our parks video anyway, because it is not disappointing. Oh, oh, that's got me all worked up. Okay, number six, Westlake in Hongzhou. I strongly disagree with this one as well. If this was oh. one of those feedback forms, I'd be like a one, strongly disagree. I strongly disagree too. I can't believe that. What's disappointing about the, I mean, that it's busy? Yeah, it is. Oh, there is just a squirrel with the hugest like nut. In, where, where have you got that from, mate? Oh, Sorry, awesome. distracted. Um, that is busy. <gasps> well, what were we talking about? Hong I just Joe Westlake. squirrels. Oh, oh that's a cute squirrel. Like, what's this thing about the Westlake? Like that is busy. Yeah, I mean, I could see I mean, it on a public know. holiday, maybe. It be is a, little a very bit popular place. But I mean, how many cities in the world oh, so have something like like a lake like that right in their center? Um, it's a bit like, reminds me of New York in the sense they have like Central Park or in London they have some of these parks and things. Yeah. And having a green space like that right in the center of the city. Oh, I mean, it's beautiful. not right in the center of the new city, but certainly the, the older part. It's amazing. Yeah, I, it's lovely. I totally disagree. I mean, so the only thing that we were li slightly disappointed in was we tried to cycle. And yeah. we thought we'd be able to cycle around, which we couldn't, which, I mean, that's fair enough that you can't yeah, cycle. Yeah. It's pretty big. Um, but actually, I loved it. There were so many areas that you could go to. It's the first time that we saw kind of like the ballroom dancing because we just moved to China. Yeah, yeah, it's that got was fond memories for me. I'm quite, I'm quite shocked at that one. I'm a one. big fan, for sure. So number five is another one from Wuhan. Ooh, Wuhan coming in strong. Ooh, Wuhan and Hunan. You yeah, guys. Central, central-ish provinces. Ooh. So this one is the Yellow Crane Tower. What I don't know if that? you know what this is. Okay, so basically it is a kind of like a temple sort of structure. A temple? 
Well, I mean, I say okay. temple, I'm probably wrong. It's probably not a temple, but it looks like a Chinese sort of, a, like, pagoda temple type Pagoda, thing. right. So, I googled this. I wasn't sure what it was, because I thought, to me, that sounds like quite a modern building, the Yellow Crane Tower, but it is not. It's, an, it's kind of an old Chinese-style building. Yep. So, I spoke to a friend about this, and I said, well, what what's disappointing about it? And she said, because it's new, it's been rebuilt. So it's not original, which is why it's disappointing. So it's like one of these buildings, which obviously got knocked down at some point, and oh, then it's been rebuilt, sad. which is why it's yeah. disappointing. I guess a similar thing to, you know, the one, um, the porcelain tower in Nanjing. Yeah. It, it's not the original. So maybe that's why. I don't know. Tell me why. That's what she said. So yeah, I'm going to sure. go for So number four. Yep. The Terracotta Warriors, Xi'an. Strongly agree. Oh, do you? Do you agree with that? Do you think it was disappointing? Do you think they're going to cancel my visa now? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I do, actually. Uh, for me, I was really excited. As I've mentioned before, I'm a big fan of history. Terracotta Warriors is something that's always fascinated me. It's not so much the Warriors themselves. They're great. But, like, the whole thing... You basically go into like a big cattle shed. Feels like a cattle market where you're being like pushed through it gates. Also rain the day people we are like pushing Shut. you. You can't see anything. There's people shouting, screaming. It's literally like a cattle market. And uh, yeah, wasn't a fan. I, uh, I enjoyed actually some of the smaller exhibits. Yeah, more like than the, the main pit hall. three was really interesting. Yeah, also, like some where they of the were little still excavating ones. It. And even just like even just some of the glass cabinets, oh being God. able to see them up close. Another squirrel. I thought it was, but it was your hand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> my heart went. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Sorry, carry on. But yeah, anyway, that's that's my take. How do you feel about the Terracotta Warriors? Well, I was not interested in going at all. I didn't think it was going to be very good. I wasn't bothered. And then we went. So... I kind of thought it was okay. I thought it was quite good. So I am completely the opposite. I had See, low it's expectations. it's all about expectations, guys. Lower your expectations. Life lesson. Exactly. I had low expectations, so it got higher. I was quite. I thought pit three was really good, but like you said, yep. oh my God, that main pit was horrible. Awful. We oh. left. We nearly didn't even see the Warriors. Um, and we waited until lunchtime and went back when it was quieter. And literally, it was like fights on. People pushing you out of the way. Uh, pensioners, again. Shout out to pensioners for being rough and ready here in China. Yep. The most aggressive people <laughs> pushing yep. you out of the way. And it was wet. So people were sliding and oh, it, was, it was chaos. But I thought it was pretty impressive. I mean, if you just think about the Warriors in general, like how? Just how? How do they happen? Crazy. How do they come to be? Yeah. So, we are down to our top three. We have, coming in at three, Ancient Cities generic. And coming in at two, Ancient Towns generic. So, let's kind of talk about them as a whole. We'll combine the two similar. together. I do kind of agree. Yep. Ancient Towns, they are a little bit disappointing. But also, I do feel like you know what you're going to get. I don't have too strong feelings on that, though. I kind know? of feel like you know what you're going to get. Yeah. And, I mean... Some some places were more disappointing than others. I feel like um, I expected more, a little bit more when we went to Dali. Um, and yeah. What disappointed me more was the fact that it was just so rowdy and like loud. Yeah, like allowing for me, like allowing KTVs or like loud bars and stuff like that in a in, in an ancient, ancient town is it? just not yeah. not a thing for me really. But that was a whole host of things that bottled up into that For it wasn't sure. just that obviously so i feel like people went and people have a better time than we did it was just a mix of reasons but that was certainly one of them okay so number one is a place okay. are you ready so number one is gulang yu in xiamen did i say that right xiamen xiamen so gulang yu Gulang Yu. Gulang Yu in Shen. I have never heard of that. I never heard of it either. So I googled this and it says it is a pedestrian only island off the coast of Shaman. So you have to get a ferry there. There's no okay. cars or bikes allowed. That's pretty allowed. cool. I, yeah. And it attracts more than 10 million visitors a year, making it one of the most visited attractions in China. Wow. 
Have you been? I've never even heard of it. I never heard of it either. So again, I asked my friend at work and I said, well, why is it disappointing? And she said, well, because they've used European architecture. European architecture? And I said, okay. And And then uh, she said, oh, it's just doesn't look that good. What do you Fair think? Fair enough. I think I think I need to have a little bit of a Google. Yeah, I mean, or should we go? I don't think that would be number one on my... Li- oh, we could go. Let's <laughs> see. Make a video about the most disappointing place in China. <laughs> well, according to this... Where list, that would get can, some fruity comments. Can let, let me just reiterate, we did not make up this list. This it, is not our list. I feel like that tree is going to go. This is not our list. This is made by domestic tourists here in China. So, do you agree with this top 20? What do you think? Like, there's some I agree with this. I, I don't agree. Do. I, I mean, I've not been there, but surely that can't be the most disappointing place in China. I yeah. reckon I can come up with somewhere even more disappointing. I think we need to do a part two. I think we should do a part two. Would you like to see a part two? Leave us a comment. Let us know. Tell us actually some of... I've got a good idea. Why don't you tell us some of your most disappointing places and we'll include them in we'll our We'll read podcast. them out. We'll read them out. Yeah, yeah. Let's so do it. So it's not just our views. Um, it could be yours as well. And so some of the disappointing... I reckon you're going to have more than me because you are Debbie Downer sometimes. I miss the disappointment. <laughs> um, as you can see, I'm quite easily <laughs> pleased at things. Um, so yeah, I think that is a great idea. Um, so I think on that note... Let's end this. We've been chatting for a long time. I thought that was yep. really fun. I think we've got a lot of traveling to do to visit some of these disappointing yeah, places. For sure. And see what it's like. First things first, though. I need to get off this rock. I know. Because it's so uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next Peace time. Peace out.